App Inventor is a quick, easy, and fun way to create apps for Android smartphones and Android tablets like the Nexus 7, and it's even free to use. This tutorial introduces App Inventor, giving a glimpse of what it does and what makes it unique for app development. App Inventor is a cloud-based tool for creating applications, and that means that the App Inventor software development system runs inside your internet browser and on the App Inventor website servers. You just go to the App Inventor website and start drawing out your app's user interface, and then define the behavior to bring the app to life. To access App Inventor in your browser, go to appinventor.mit.edu, as shown here in the browser address bar. To log in, you'll click on the Create button at upper right. You'll need a Gmail account to log in to App Inventor. If you are already logged into your Gmail account, App Inventor will ask your permission to use your Gmail login credentials. Otherwise, it will ask you to log in. Now, once you've logged in, you'll see your App Inventor projects page. Let's now take a first look and a brief overview of the App Inventor user interface designer, and then we'll also take a, just a quick look at the blocks editor. Uh, shown here is the user interface for a very simple calculator. It has a set of buttons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, to enter the numbers into our calculation and some simple arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and so forth. A very simple little calculator. To show how this uh, user interface designer works, we will actually just make this little simple modification. This area right here is what shows the numbers as we enter them, uh, or the results of the calculation. What we're going to do is add a text label to this so that we'll actually identify this as where the result is. We do that by dragging uh, an actual user interface component from this area called the palette over here on the left, and we'll drag that into the viewer, which is where we're building the user interface of our application. I'm going to go over here and click on Label. I'm going to drag this right over here, and you'll see that it has now added it to the viewer. However, it says text for Label 1, which obviously isn't what it is we want to do. So we're going to change the name on that to say the word results. So we'll come right in here, click in here, select that, and results. Go back and click anywhere else, and we'll now see the updated value here on the screen. So that's a very brief introduction to the user interface designer. Obviously, we'll return to this in some later lessons to see how these various components over here can be used in our apps. Now, of course, the user interface is just a picture of what we want our app to look like. At this point, it wouldn't actually do anything because all we've done is decide, define where the controls go on the screen. Uh, so we have to do the, to make it do something is we have to create some programming. And in App Inventor, programming is done by using something called the Blocks Editor. If you go up here to the upper right, you'll see that we have a, a button called Blocks. And when we click on that, we'll transfer over into the Blocks Editor. Now, if you've written computer programs before, you're probably used to a text-based programming language like Java or C Sharp or PHP, where program statements are written out in what looks like a pseudo-English language description, literally, textually. But App Inventor is different. App Inventor builds a program out of graphical building blocks. Uh, a program is assembled by dragging and dropping programming blocks into the blocks viewer. Uh, program blocks can be standalone, or they can be used by attaching them to other blocks. Programs are built by assembling these groups of blocks into the overall program behavior, and we can adjust some data and parameter values and so forth. So let's take a look at uh, what this program looks like here. Uh, when we press the digit 1, we've identified a button, digit 1, and so we say when it's been clicked, similarly to when it's been pressed, then we do some function, which involves actually putting one into the display on the screen. Another example would be uh, how we do the arithmetic. We'll come down here to take a look at how that's done. Uh, to do arithmetic, if we have selected a particular, imp <laughs> excuse me, particular operator, uh, say to do addition, uh, then what we do is we perform the calculations using these uh, block operations. To switch from the Blocks Editor and go back to the User Interface Designer, we'll just click here on the Designer button, and there we are back again. To run our application, we use the menu item up here called Connect, and you'll see that there's several items, AI Companion, Emulator, and USB. 
there's three different ways, actually four different ways we can run an application uh, that we've created in App Inventor. And we'll actually get into more details about that in a later lesson. Uh, but the AI Companion is actually the simplest method. It involves using Wi-Fi and uh, your smartphone. Uh, if your smartphone and this computer are on the same Wi-Fi network, we click on AI Companion and App Inventor displays a QR code. We use the App Companion to take a picture of the QR code, scan it onto our phone, and then the app is automatically loaded into our smartphone and ready to run. If you don't use the camera, you can also enter the code directly and it will actually uh, enter that and load your app for you. I'll just mention these others here. An emulator is like a simulator. That basically means a program that simulates uh, an Android phone or tablet. And in this case, it's a piece of software that you can install on your computer. It can be a little troubling to set up. Uh, it's not as easy as Wi-Fi. If you've got that and you've got a phone, that's by far the easiest way to do it. But with the emulator, you can run your application in a smartphone simulator that runs on your computer. You can also connect your phone to the computer using USB. And then there's also another method which involves actually uh, saving the file. We'll go over here to the build menu. Uh, we can actually save the app to our computer and you could just email it to your phone <laughs> and uh, download and install the app directly into your phone. This is a little more cumbersome, but it does work as well. So there's four methods to do that and we'll get into that a little bit later. So this first tutorial has just been a very brief, high-level overview of the major components of App Inventor as a cloud-based software development system for Android applications. The next uh, tutorial in the series will take a look at actually setting up that connection and will create a very simple so-called Hello World app that just displays some text on the screen. And we'll use that to test out our connection to our smartphone. So that's it for tutorial one.